and a special welcome to all women who listen to the new encouraging meditation self-identity and confidence in Christ. This is your pastor, Yeti. Yesterday we started a new encouraging meditation for women to look at your self-identity, how you see yourself. how people look at you, how you react to that, how your identity is in Christ our Lord. Today I'm going to talk about, and the encouraging lessons are not long now. Yesterday it was an introduction. I'm going to talk about self-worth. The dust glides in the air as we quicken our pace. The terrain is rough and unforgiving. Careful of every step, loosened gravel makes the journey bittersweet. Although the miles stretch behind us, one small slip on lack stone can send us backsliding. We press forward. Breathe labored and tired. We thirst for water. Breaking our pace for a moment's rest. Muscles contract and release. Tension escapes our bodies while the cool liquid quenches our parched throat. Determination sets in looking toward the other rim of the canyon. We are so close, we will not stop now. Self-worth as self-esteem defines self-esteem is defined as a confidence and satisfaction in oneself. According to the world, All of our self-worth is wrapped up in our self-confidence and self-satisfaction. Do you see the pattern here? The world is consumed with self. The Bible contradicts the world. Our self-worth, satisfaction, And confidence do not lie in our own flesh, but in Jesus Christ. Satisfaction is defined as the fulfillment of a need or want. The quality of being satisfied, convinced assurance, or certainty. Confidence is defined as a feeling or consciousness of one's power or of reliance on one's circumstances. The quality of st- or state of being certain. A relation of trust or intimacy. A communication made in confidence. As Christians, God established and reminds us through his word. We are to be rooted and grounded in Christ. Our confidence and our word should be habitual 
focused on the will of God. Once believers are able to grasp the concept, life's journey completely changes. Our thoughts and behaviors are not subject to our limited abilities and qualities. But God's limitless abilities and amazing qualities. Once we truly understand our word is not consumed with possessions and unattainable goals, but God's ability to open doors no man can close, our desires begin to change. If we can fully comprehend the love God has for us, our idea and thoughts of self-worth change. If we could appreciate our own unique individual qualities in Christ, believers would treat their own bodies, minds, actions, relationships, and personal aspirations differently. If we could repeat and believe what Scripture profoundly states, in our innermost being. Believers would be accomplishing insurmountable tasks. What holds us back? The Lord put something on my heart in regards to parenting children. praying over children because obviously you want the best for them you have the desire to reach for pot full potential and when you see him lacking through life slacking through life it triggers emotional responses And you can ask the Lord, why are they not trying? I know they can do this. Why are they barely getting by? Why aren't they studying harder? These are parental concerns many parents lay at the cross, praying and seeking the Lord's wisdom. I think the most important is how you face it by yourself. There are two different ways to face it. You can saturate their lives with the world, or you can saturate their lives with the Lord. John 4.14 4, says, But whoever drinks the water that I give him will become in him a spring of water satisfying his thirst for God, continually flowing, bubbling within him to eternal life. If we saturate our lives with worldly entertainment, worldly desires, worldly attitudes and behaviors, then we will reap the harvest of the world. If we saturate our lives with the word of God, worship music, serving in the community, 
serving in the church or praising God, then we will reap a harvest of Christ. Imagine a bucket of water filled to the brim. Once you have your mental image, place a dry sponge in the water, allowing the water to soak through the absorbent material. Once the sponge is completely saturated with water, lift the sponge sponge out of the bucket and squeeze. What comes out? Water. This is the same correlation to our lives. If we absorb worldly ideas and attitudes, what will come out of our hearts and minds? Worldly thoughts and behaviors. I live by examples and mental images. I can use my own life as the example. Before I dedicate my time and energy to serving Christ, I saturate my time with television, entertainment, and worldly advice. As Christians, we can experience a lack of spiritual growth and joy. And when a difficult situation would arise, you can find negative thoughts continually coming out of your mouth. For example, this is always the way it will be. Nothing good happens to me. Everyone else is blessed but me. I guess I will always be this way. Nothing changes. Because we filled our sponge with ridiculous worldly attitudes. When difficult situations squeezed, be squeezed, worldly statements came out of that, will come out of you. But if you dedicate yourself to saturating your life with Christ or continually filling your sponge with the Word of God, worship music and serving, when a difficult situation arises and squeezes you and me, the Word rushes out. I am the righteousness of God. God has a good plan for me to prosper. I will not conform to the world, but I am progressively changing. I am a new creation in Christ. I have saturated my life with God. When the Lord revealed the image of the sponge, my confidence and self word began to change. My negative thoughts and emotions were transformed into that new creation in Christ. Let me give you some more examples to think on. If you saturate your sponge with violent movies, when you are squeezed, anger and rage will flush out. If you saturate your sponge with sexual enticements or pornography, when you are squeezed, sexual sin and adultery will emit from your heart. And I am not the judging here. I am here with encouraging words. These are examples. And I'm not saying that you cannot enjoy a very good movie. That could be also a very excited movie in investigation of court works or a thriller that gives you some kind of insight in who people are can or a spy movie I'm, I'm giving you examples that really can influence your life very negative that's what I'm talking about so don't get me wrong
if you saturate yourself with your own self ambitions and self absorbed behavior when squeezed, loneliness and frustration will trickle out of your spirit. Our confidence and word need to be in Christ. Christians need to know what the Bible says. If you read God's word, you will find amazing scriptures regarding the Lord's thoughts about you. He knew you before you were born. Jeremiah 1 verse 5 He has a plan and purpose for you. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 You are intrinsically and wonderfully made. Psalm 139 you are the righteousness of Christ, Romans 10, 4. If you saturated your heart, mind, and spirit with scripture, your confidence and self-worth would drastically change. There are beautiful verses to meditate and think on. Saturate your heart with God's words. Make a dedicated decision in your heart. And stick with it. The climb out of the canyon can seem arduous. The challenge stretches as beyond what we think we can be stretched. Christians need to be persistent and dedicated to their journey as believers one step at a time. Let us pray. Jehovah Shalom. You, Lord, are my peace. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Him, we also have access by faith into this grace into his grace in which we stand. Let us rejoice in our hope and the confident assurance of the glory of God. And not only this, but let us exult in our sufferings and rejoice in our hardship, knowing that hardship produces patience, endurance, and endurance proven character, and proven character hope and confident assurance. Such hope never disappoints us because God's love has been abundantly poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Romans 5, 1-5 I pray this for you and all who are listening and for all Christian women in the world that the Spirit of God will touch and change your heart that you draw back to your Christ in the name of Jesus of Nazareth I pray self-worth you can live two different lives. Things happened as well for you as for me. And life is not always fair. We need to try as the best we can to abide in Christ. It is important for you and for me to have good friends, friends who look at you and can help you, friends who will help you on the way. Thank God for that. May you be blessed with the fun wonderful gifts of Christ, our Lord Jesus. And may your life become closer and closer. And may he shows you where changes need 
to take place. And may you self-identity come closer as your identity is in Christ. And God bless you. And the peace of the Lord be with you. Bye.